like went from there. You know? See, with the accent, I don't know if it's just me or you guys feel it too. I could have Berenice read like a manual <laughs> to a camera and I'd be like, oh, that's so interesting. That I've had a gaffer tell me that yeah, everything you say just sounds more artistic. Welcome back to Craft Truck. Through the lens, uh, we have with us today somebody who is just starting out to prove a very exciting uh, cinematography career. Somebody who has a beautiful eye and we think we're just getting them right before they take off. Berenice Ivano. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Did you know since you were une petite femme mm -hmm. that you wanted to be um, a, a photographer? Um, I, my love for the movies came first. And then, well, I mean, when I was, yeah, like a teen and stuff, and then for photography. But my parents didn't, I mean, we're not in a family that makes movies or whatever, so I never thought there'd be like a trajectory for me. So I, then it happened later, kind of by mistake, by moving here and being like, okay, then I can just do that. Oh, your family moved here first? No, I moved here by myself. Oh, okay. Because um, I had a, a scholarship for a design school. And then I was like, okay, I'll just find a job in the movie industry, and I just. What's the film that made you want to be a, made you want to be involved in the process of photographing? Okay, uh, the movie that really struck me was. Did you ever see this cocktail movie called The Beauty and the Beast? Yes. It's like in black and white in the fifties. Yep, just it's so it's beautiful. Just all the like, mm -hmm. lights moving and the mystery of it, and that really made a huge impact on me. And then. Any other, you know, like any. The Shining, I would say. Mm -hmm. So creepy. So and the movements and pick, stuff. Pick one image or one sequence from that movie that... I really love the one with the creepy woman in the bathroom, you know, and she looks so green and like it's just like one stark thing that happens in this really cool bathroom. I love it. And I think it's really cool to make an image really bright but still really beautiful, you know? I think it's a hard thing to do. Well, yes, because I noticed that you... Uh, have a phenomenal ability with darkness. I love darkness. You, <laughs> well, clearly. So let's talk a little bit about that because I have watched your stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think the, the short, the 15 minute short Oscars. Escape, is, yes. Is the one about the, the pedophile finally getting yes. to come up. That's right. Mm -hmm. Very subtly told, by the way. Yeah. So um, when, just tell us about how you met the filmmaker and decided to make this movie. I mean, I um, I met the filmmaker on um, on the dark night, um, and then he just he wanted to make this really moody movie, and it was uh, it was this cool like super quick project. So I just like hopped on, and what I loved is he. I think you mean like the last scene, it's really like this well, stark lighting. It, you have this. I don't know if it was a decision that happened in the script or if it was just a decision that happen between a discussion between the two of you but the main character walks into the room mm -hmm. and the light a hotel room the light yeah. doesn't go on mm -hmm. and you spend the rest of the entire scene with basically no lights on. a vittorio storero one shaft yeah. of light and i'll have to give you know. the director that because he he was into the fact that there was just no lights right. on which was difficult so because. so what makes it so what do you do in that situation where you're trying to show ge you're still trying to show action and geography yeah. and geometry of what's going on well what I think is the most important is keeping things supernatural I mean I'm sorry not supernatural but very natural so the cool the the cool thing that worked out is that there was no light in the room but the light was coming from separate rooms and luckily the layout meant that the light could come from three points in the room, which made it really great for backlight and for, you know, and I think when you're trying to make a dark scene, backlight is really your your favorite ally, you know? Um, and so that really worked out for the scene, you know, to just have it come from different areas in, in, in different adjacent rooms, basically. Mm -hmm. oh, the bathroom and the window mm -hmm. outside. Which was really tough in that location. I mean, it was really like a last minute shoot. And they were like, I think there was like, 40 amps total in the entire location. So we're just dealing with like the smallest light possible you can possibly imagine mm -hmm. was intense. What was the other short that I saw? Oh, about the um, 
About the prostitutes. Mm-hmm. That was my AFI thesis. The story is about... It's about this young woman who goes on a weekend, a romantic weekend with her boyfriend and just has like a troubled sexuality with him and he passes out and in the middle of the night she's kind of woken up by this sound in the hallway and she founds this prostitute getting literally thrown out of a room. And it's in a high-end hotel, it's kind of high-end prostitute, it's not like a... Trashy. Yeah. And she end, ends up befriending the prostitute and following her to her next client. I don't know, I, I, it could be sort of a sexual lost in translation or something. You know, it has that kind of feeling. Um, what was important for me is to not make it too beautiful. That's why we kind of make it made it green a little bit, tiny bit. Because, like, oh, that beautiful girl being worried about not being beautiful enough and this whole, you know what I mean? We just kind of wanted to have it like a sick feeling to it. So, uh huh. So that's that how you give a little bit of a green yeah. color to it. Mm -hmm. And, okay, so you are both, you're not just, you're not just a, a photographer, you're, or a cinematographer, you're mm -hmm. a photographer and you're a visual artist. I mean, at least I what draw on my downtime. Yeah. Yes. Now, what I've noticed is this is incredible. Um, ability of yours that you make semi-interpretable images where you can kind of see what's going on but you also feel like you're almost staring at an abstract a little mm -hmm. bit so in some of your other pieces that shows up in your photography where you're super super close on you yeah. know the creases of a face or the creases of an arm yeah. tell us a little bit about that is that stuff you're just experimenting with or is it going to find its way also into your Definitely. I I love, I think it came from my love of parts of the body and I, it's just marrying my love of graphic design and lines and simplicity and just really making it happen in photography. I mean, there's this, in the feature that I shot, there's this scene in, in a rooftop with this girl who basically takes her bra off for the first time and it's this moment in the movie. I just went crazy on just the lines of of the body and how it can be abstract. What I love is to to show the the graphic beauty of, of an object and just almost make it an object but not an object. I don't know how to to abstract it a bit. Yeah. And in my drawings often it's it's a face, it's a it's a character, it's a part of a body that makes a character but it's but you can't see it right away or you have to turn it upside down to see it. And I just think it's interesting. Mm -hmm. And I think it, it, it's also a strive for simplicity, you know, and I think in photography and in art in general, I think elegance is simplicity. And I think that's why I love darkness is that, you know. So tell us what this movie that you were talking about is about. The idea is um, the start of a feminist revolution, but basically the start of a, a topless movement. So we shot in New York for five weeks with girls running around topless. Well, at least you know it's going to make its money back. Yes. If, if, if nothing else, yes. this movie's definitely... Yes. Who's the director on the film? Uh, Lena Esco. Uh-huh. She's uh -huh. a first-time director. She's a really cool... How did you two get director. connected? Um, she saw my AFI thesis, and there was a lot of nudity in it, and she loved the way I shot that, so that kind of came, you know... One to the next. Yeah. Uh-huh. What did you shoot um, the movie on? The Alexa. Mm-hmm. Um... And uh, it was an awesome, awesome experience. I mean, a low budget, low budget film, or yeah. I mean, it was, it was low budget, but it was good budget for a low budget. It was like over half a million dollars, so that's a, yeah, it's a good budget. It's a sizable, you know? sizable. Um, so it allow us to do great things. I think um, the director had a great visual eye, and the team that we made with the production designer and the costume designer and I just really meshed. And it's a movie with like bright colors and really cool colors, but at the same time, like kind of a cool, darker feel. And I think we really worked it out. Explain. Go over that one again. Yeah. yeah. I'm, not, I'm not buying. Okay. Maybe. <laughs> For instance, there's this. Okay, those yeah. girls, like, yeah. they found this abandoned 1920s pool at the basement of a hotel. It's like. Ooh giant enormous thing right and with the production designer we thought it would be amazing to have it that turquoise color like we're underwater so she like covered all the walls with blue or tints because it was like this ugly yellow kind of like dirty yellow and um 
And then I used a lot of neons that we um, actually got the idea for watching Fight Club. So we wanted to make like a girl fight club. So there's like those neons around the pool edge and the, the whole headquarters happened is in, at, the, at the center of the pool. So you have those blue daylight, you know, lights that appear blue because we're on tungsten, shooting tungsten, right? And they're giving a blue edge to all those girls. And so all they're wearing pink, like really hot pink, really hot pink inside yeah. the pool and yep. with the back edge that's blue. But it's still this dark kind of weird, like decrepit pool. So that's and they're like topless. the bright colors, the boobs yep. and, and the darkness. <laughs> All right, so what, tell us about some other sequences in the film that... Uh... Um, sequences, okay, there's this, this moment where we filmed her topless in, um, in the middle of Times Square. And basically in New York, you can legally be topless, but you can't get a permit to shoot it because then it's like you're making a now porn. Now you're making porn, right? Oh, of course. Yeah, so we had to just like, you know, be in contact with the NYPD at the same time we're, that we're sh like have an insider from there and just be like, we'll just be there for two minutes right. and like have a van, jump, t jump off, do the sequence, run away. So that was really cool. So you had to do this sort of like around the cops. Yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. Kind of like, the problem is with, when you're dealing with that, you just, even if you tell one cop and he's like, okay, it's going to be fine. And you don't know if one is going to come along and like ruin your shot and be like, no, it's not. And just like, so you just have to like surf the rules. And, and then the whole thing was having the girls with masks. And then we realized that it's even more illegal to have a group of people wearing masks in the city than it is to just be topless. So I'm just like having the really? double, yeah. What's the reason for that? Like, I don't know, terrorist groups or like, just you can't Something. hide your identity when you're in multiple groups. I guess it's like, you know, bank robbers, I don't know. Something. Movies, you know when you see movies, bank robbers. And yeah, I know, I know, uh, yeah. So uh, are you working on another picture right now, another future? Yes, yes. Tell us about that. I'm leaving in for Mexico in like two weeks. Awesome. Yeah, so the story is amazing. It's the story is this woman who was raised by her grandmother, has a terrible relationship with her mom, and she discovers that she's pregnant on the same day that she discovers that her grandmother is about to die. So the whole family gathers at the grandmother's house away from Mexico City just to basically say goodbye. And that the grandma who's supposed to die within a few hours just doesn't die that day or the next day or the next day until basically the end of the movie where all the relationships are entangled and, and it kind of works out. And it's right up my alley for me because I, I have five sisters and a lot of family drama, so I'm really excited to Huge family. put that to use. Yes. What do, you, what, do you, what do you want to do with this picture visually? Um, I'm really excited about it because it's about death. So playing with the, you know, and it's, a lot of it takes place in this one room with this grandmother dying, and it's about, you know, how to shoot one room in 19 scenes and just make it every time kind of different and feel differently according to the story. And, I mean, that's why I like this job, is to convey a story in a very physical way almost, just giving you the feeling of it. And I think it's going to be really cool to experiment um, different qualities of light, you know, different levels of light and different way of showing life or then death taking over, life taking over. And, I, and there's also this theme of red in the movie that I think is linked to life and femininity. And, and it's really cool because it has a lot of, um, of uh, violence and, and, and tough things into it, but it's very also uplifting. So, I mean, it's kind of an amour, but like, more cheerful and feminine, I guess. Cool. Very so, cool. Yeah, I'm really excited to shoot it. Is there any other projects coming around the corner that you're... Uh, by the way, have you considered well, getting into commercials great. now? Or? I really want to get into commercials. I would love to do some beauty commercials and stuff. I saw but two of your spots. I think there was mm -hmm. a Toyota one. And a Guess one, too. Yes, right. Um, yeah, I would love to do more. But you know how it is. Just finding your way. Well, I'm so, sure it will happen. Thank you. I'm sure it will happen. Berenice Ivano. Thank you Thank very you for much. being here. We look forward to seeing where your career goes. Very far. <laughs> very good. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.